In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Good afternoon, everyone. Amen. And we welcome all of those joining us on YouTube this weekend as well. As we celebrate the feast of the baptism of Jesus, and we commemorate that scene in the gospel, we'll hear when all of these people came out into the desert to be baptized for the repentance of their sins. So as we begin our celebration of this Mass, let us do the same thing. Asking the Lord to be near with us in those areas in which we struggle, those areas in which we have sinned. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen with whom I am pleased, who, upon whom I have my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord your sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The Lord bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord will bless his people with peace. 
the God of glory thunders, and his temple all say, Glory, the Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened? all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. If you were told that the king of the universe had entered our world, was even right here in Davenport right now, where would you look? Where do you think you would find God? There's a great scene in the movie The Darkest Hour which tells the story of Winston Churchill during the bombing of Britain, of him during this time when the Nazis were seeking to instill fear in the people of London seeking to upend their day-to-day lives, of their Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, getting on the subway or getting on a city bus, riding with these ordinary, everyday people. These people going to the bank or going to the grocery store, and they would look up, and there he was, the Prime Minister of Britain, the guy leading the charge against the Nazis. Churchill was doing this to tell them, to show them that they ought not be afraid, that they shouldn't let the fear of the Nazis upend their day-to-day lives. He, their leader, was with them. He wasn't removed from their plight or their anxieties. I think this is a good image for what's happening in our gospel this weekend as we celebrate the feast of the baptism of Jesus. 
Let's try and picture, let's try and imagine that scene briefly. There on the banks of the Jordan River, out in the middle of the desert, there was amassed a great multitude of people. This great crowd had gathered around John the Baptist. John the Baptist who had started this new religious movement calling for a baptism in the River Jordan for the repentance of sins, the forgiveness of sins. People seeking to start afresh in their relationship with God. It had to, had to have been quite the scene. There were all of these ordinary, everyday people gathered by the riverside in the desert. And why? Because they had noticed something wasn't quite right in their lives. Something was weighing them down. Sins or bad habits, darkness or pain. And they wanted a fresh start. But among this great crowd of people, also stood Jesus, the king of the universe, blending in with all of the rest, elbow to elbow with them all. Maybe Jesus, if you could imagine, was standing right next to a man who had some past misdeeds that he wanted forgiven. Or maybe to his left was a woman who had been suffering the loss of a loved one, or maybe right in front of him was a young person who was still trying to figure out what they were doing with their lives, and they were seeking. Whatever had brought all of these people into the desert, each one of them was seeking God. They were seeking a deeper relationship with God. And they were full of expectation, the first words in our gospel, that something was happening, that that they were indeed going to find God. But little did they know that the God that they sought was right there standing next to them. And this God, Jesus, wasn't seeking to lord their pain or their weaknesses or their sins over them. No. God was seeking to just be with them in the struggle. And so he too goes forward to be baptized by John. Now Jesus had no reason really to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. He had none. He wouldn't have been baptized to increase his relationship with God. He was God. Instead, what we see here at the outset of his public ministry is what we see up and down the Gospels. If we want to find God we'll often find him precisely in those areas of our life in which we feel weak, in our struggles, in our recognition of our own waywardness. Our chaos, our darkness, doesn't make God turn away or depart from our company. God could have manifested himself, his power, his glory anywhere and in any way. But he chose out there in the middle of the desert surrounded by sinners and those who knew the struggles of everyday life. Why? Why would God do this? Because this is where all of us are at. We all are at, in some way or another, at a place of struggle or sin or we feel the loss of a loved one or something and that's where we are and so that's where God is. Because the fundamental Christian message of God becoming man in the person of Jesus Christ means that God wants to be with us. God's thrown his lot in with each and every one of us. When we weep for pain or shake for anxiety, God is with us. When we cry at graves, God is with us. When we feel abandoned or neglected or on the verge of giving up, God is with us. So can we choose today to believe that a God who chose to come into our world chose to be near to us in those dark and chaotic moments of life? Now maybe this sounds real nice, but how do we experience it? How do we notice God's presence in our life? Well, we get the answer in our gospel. 
It's through prayer. Through the entire beginning of the gospel, no one has paid Jesus any mind. He's already been baptized, St. Luke tells us. Even John didn't say anything unusual about him. No one noticed that God was with him. It was only after all of this had taken place, what do we hear Jesus was doing? He was praying. Jesus was praying, and what happened? The heavens were opened up, and a voice was heard from the heavens saying, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. It's when we pray, everybody, that the heavens are opened up in our own lives, that we can hear the voice of God. Now, was Jesus' prayer just him saying all the things he needed? Maybe. But even more fundamental, Jesus' prayer and our prayer ought to be our desire just to be with the God who desires to be with us. And then in that silence of our own hearts, we too can hear those words spoken to us from God. This, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter with whom I am well pleased. At each one of our baptisms, God has claimed us as his own and will remain with us through thick and thin. So, if the king of the universe was right here, right now, where would you look? In prayer, everybody, let's look for God not only in life's joys and successors and praise God for them, but also in its pains and its struggles, knowing that Jesus Christ is with us elbow to elbow in them all. Together, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come, amen. Trusting in our Heavenly Father's love for us, we entrust to him all of our prayers and needs. That all who were called to the waters of baptism this past year, and for all who have formed them in faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may bless his people in all nations with harmony and goodwill, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are burdened by physical or emotional difficulties may receive God's healing touch and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may always provide us with the grace for contrition and repentance and an an aversion to sin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have gathered to share word and sacrament and those who are unable or unwilling to come, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For even Martin, all the faithful departed, all the intentions listed in our book of prayer, and for all of our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Heavenly Father, in your great love and mercy, hear and answer all of these our prayers. For we bring them to you in the holy and powerful name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of, our, of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, 
He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Be smart. Peace Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. There will be expectant parent blessings after Mass uh, at the foot of the altar this evening. There's also blood pressure checks in the parish nurse's office following Mass today. There will be a training session for extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion tomorrow here in the church beginning at 12.15 p.m. This is a training for anyone who missed any of the prior uh, sessions earlier this fall. And then finally, the Christmas decorations will be coming down tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m., so if you're free and able and willing, uh, more than welcome to join us, take those down, 1 o'clock tomorrow here at the church. I hope you all have a great week. Stay warm. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks. Thanks. Be to God.